स्टूडेंट्स डू यू हेयर माय वॉइस ओके टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन इज ऑन द रिव्यू ऑफ एन टी सॉरी इयर एनॉटमी एंड अबाउट द सिमटमटोलॉजी फॉर द हिस्ट्री so as you know uh the uh the outer ear is comprised on the pinna uh, lobule conca uh okay along with the extraordinary canal it consists of auricular pinna pinna is a crumpled plate uh due uh these uh, students do you see these slides of my presentation or not okay स्टूडेंट मैसेज कह रहे हैं कोई स्लाइड नजर नहीं आ रही स्टूडेंट डू यू सी द स्लाइड ओके सो एक्सटर्नल ईयर कंसिस्ट ऑफ ऑरिकल और पेनर दिना इज अ क्रम्पल प्लेट ऑफ इलास्टिक कार्टिक कवर्ड बाय स्किन द लोब्यूल इज अ लोअर पार्ट एंड सॉफ्ट पार्ट ऑफ ईयर कंसिस्ट ऑफ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू कवर्ड बाय स्किन कौन का इज अ लार्ज डिप्रेशन विच लीड्स इन टू एक्सटर्नल कॉस्टिक मीटर्स इंटरनल मसल्स विच कैन ऑल्टर द शेप ऑफ द ईयर external muscles move ear are rudimentary in human so this is uh, the anatomy of the ear in which you see the outer ear middle ear and the inner ear so outer ear starts from the pinna up to the uh, uh, medial or sorry the lateral border of lateral boundary of the tympanic membrane and from the medial or you can say the tympanic tympanic membrane up to the foot plate of stapes okay uh, this area is uh, uh, included in the middle ear and from the foot plate of stapes uh, till further up to the nerves the, the area is the inner ear the um, lobule is a lower part and soft part of the ear which consists of connective tissues covered by skin concha is a large depression which leads into external acoustic meters intrinsic muscles uh, which can alter the shape of the ear and extensor muscles move ear uh, are rudimentary in human the blood supply of the pinna is posterior auricular artery and superior temporal artery lymphatic drainage is from pre auricular and post auricular superficial temporal lymph nodes the nerve supply is upper two third of the lateral supply is the auricular temporal nerve and lower two thirds by the greater auricular nerve medial surface uh, is supplied by the upper two third by the lateral occipital nerve and lo lower one third of the by the greater auricular nerve 
and the root of the auditor supplied by the facial nerve. So you should remember all these supplies, blood supply and the nerve supply of the ear, pinna. Extraordinary canal uh, conducts the sound waves uh, and uh, it is a S shaped in a structure. C centimeter, uh, it is straightened by the examination uh, in which you do the maneuver, in which you're pulling upwards, backwards, and slightly laterally. Anterior wall and floor are longer than posterior wall and roof. Medial third is bony, and lateral two third is cartilaginous. The bony part. The, the bony part is uh, uh, is uh, is C-shaped in cross section, lined with thin skin firmly adherent to the periosteum, and clearly formed by the tympanic membrane of the temporal bone. Posterior superior part is formed by the squamous temporal bone. So the estuary meters is uh, comprised on the two parts, bony part and the cartilage part. The cartilage part is also C-shaped in, in section. When you cut the uh, ear, it is look like you to be C-shaped. The skin is adherent to the perichondrium, contains sebaceous gland and ceruminous glands, it is modified with the sweat glands. The asterocaustic meatus, uh, the blood supply of the outer part by superficial temporal and posterior auricular arteries. Inner part by deep auricular branch of the maxillary artery. Lymphatic drainage is through the pre-auricular and post-auricular and superficial cervical nymph nodes. The nerve supply is the anterior half by the auricular temporal nerve and posterior half by the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. So this is this is this is all I devise the anatomy in which uh, uh, I discuss uh, all these things. The middle ear um, for tympanic cavity is about 15 millimeter in anterior posterior and particular diameter. Shape is of biconcave lens. The lateral wall is largely occupied by the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane extends upwards for 10 millimeter from the floor and also bulges inwards. Above the membrane and temporal bone is hollowed out into the epitympanic recess. Tympanic membrane fibrous circular structure, one centimeter in diameter, covered uh, externally by the layer of uh, stratified squamous epithelium. Lies obliquely at uh, 55 degrees with the external acoustic meters. Faces facing toward downwards and forward laterally. Okay. The concords of the meter is by the, uh, the depth. Uh, of the concavity shows a small depression called umbo. And this is the cone of the light. So these are the normal landmarks of the tympanic membrane. If these are the landmarks are you see, then the tympanic membrane is normal. The handle of the, of the malleus is firmly attached to the inner surface of the membrane. From that, the lateral process of malleus two thickened bands 
of the barrier folds are diverged to the membranes or temporary membrane in the pars flaccida is formed so this is a pars flaccida known as sharpness membrane okay and this is a pars tensor it is uh, held te uh, tensor by the inward pull of the tympanic membrane and the muscles the tympanic membrane is thickened at its circumference and slotted into a groove in the tympanic plate tympanic membrane supplied by the deep auricular artery from the maxillary artery on the medial side and stellar mustard artery from the posterior auricular artery on the mucous surface and form the circular anastomosis with the anterior branch of the maxillary artery around the margin of the membrane nerve supply on the medial surface uh, is supplied by the auricular temporal nerve supply okay the medial wall of the tympanic membrane okay so the medial wall of the tympanic cavity sorry a non membrane is the lateral wall of the inner ear okay the both are the same in a uh, lateral wall of the inner ear or the medial wall of the tympanic cavity it uh, consists of a promontory uh, which is the first term of the cochlea indented with the fine groove and uh, as uh, by the tympanic plexus this is the cochlea above it is a horizontal ridge for the canal of the facial nerve and immediately above that is the horizontal bulge during the lateral semicircular canal above and behind the promontory is the oval window of the fenestra vestibuli below or be and behind the promontory is the round window of the fenestra cochlea closed in life by the fibrous secondary membrane so this is a uh, an oval window and this is the round window okay so the oval window is covered by the stapes foot plate okay and the round window is covered by a membrane secondary tympanic membrane the roof of the tympanic uh, cavity is contains the tegmen tympani this is the tegmen tympani we separate the tympanic cavity from the brain it is the petrous bone uh, that forms also the canal for tensor tympanic and the tympanic antrum the floor of the tympanic cavity is a thin plate of bone above the jugular fossa uh, at the anterior end is the internal opening of the tympanic navicular for the tympanic branch of the postventral nerve okay, this is the floor and this is the roof anterior wall of the tympanic membrane tympanic cavity certain approximation of uh, floor is prepared by the two canals the lower is the bony and the upper is the for the canal for the tympani uh, muscle this is for the eustachian tube opening lower one and this is for the upper is the for the tendon demand that as you see in this figure the two canals are there in the anterior part so uh, the this is the anterior for the ten tensor tympani muscle and this is for the uh, lower one for the eustachian tube opening the floor of the tympanic cavity as already i mentioned okay the posterior wall of the tympanic cavity is deficient above is deficient above where there is an aperture the aditus which lead back into the tympanic antrum and below the aditus a hollow cone the pyramid projects into the tympanic cavity okay 
apex is perforated by the tendon of the stapedius so if you know the exact anatomy in of the uh, ear so in this way you prevent all the structures during time of uh, surgery and also you uh, find the disease where it is uh, going on in case of uh, chronic separative otitis media or csm or mastoiditis uh student uh, this is uh, the your clinical posting clinical posting so in the clinical posting the this is uh, your uh, clinical posting lecture in which i discuss the anatomy of the ear uh, the uh, history taking and the symptoms for the ear disease so this is uh, in this class i discuss all these things impending antrum is the mastoid antrum this is the antrum okay so this is very a uh, little bit uh, difficult to know the each and everything in the anatomy but if you uh, read uh, again again then you think uh, or remember all these things so impending antrum is a small circular air filled space situated in, in the posterior part of the petrous part of the temporal bone One centimeter size is of adult size at birth. Superiorly is the tendon tympani. Inferiorly the mastoid process. Anteriorly is communicated with the epitaphyseal cells, and posteriorly separate from the sigmoid sinus by a thin plate. Medially by the petrous temporal bone and laterally squamous temporal bone. The middle ear cavity contents ossicles are malleus, incus, and stapes. Muscles are tensor tympani, stapedius. vessels and nerves the cord tympani and tympanic plexus of the ear okay so you should know the contents of the middle ear during time of examination of the ear you find all these things functions of middle ear is the is a, is a narrow oblique slit like ear opening cavity in the petrous part of temporal bone transmit the vibrations of tympanic membrane to the perilymph of the inner ear there are three main ossicles malleus incus and stapes okay malleus incus and stapes malleus uh, is a hammer like a shaped bone incus is the an anvil and stapes is the stirrup uh so you should uh, know a li little bit of each of the uh, ossicles malleus uh, connects with the incus and attaches to the inner surface of the, of the tympanic membrane similarly uh, incus connects the malleus to the stapes and incus transfers the vibration from malleus to the stapes and uh, stapes has uh, two uh, cruras and also Uh, it covers the oval window okay so it uh, transmits the sound from the uh, incus to the crura of the incus to the oval window muscles of the uh, middle ear are uh, the stapedius stapedius is the smallest skeletal muscle in the human body at just over the millimeter in length proper stabilizes the smallest bone in the body and stapes stapes emerges from the pin point foramen in the apex of the pyramidal eminence prominent in the posterior wall of the tympanic cavity innervated by the nerve to the stapedius and the branch of cranial nerve seventh muscles tensor tympani the larger of the two muscles of tympanic cavity is of uh, contained in the bony canal above the osseous portion of the auditory Group. Its role is to dampen sounds such as those produced from the chewing 
It arises from the cartilaginous portion of the auditory tube and adjoining part of the greater wing of sunoid, inserted into the handle of the malleus. Auditory uh, auditory tube is, is a tube or channel through which the tympanic cavity communicates with the nasal part of the pharynx. Five millimeter long, extends from the anterior wall of the middle ear to the lateral wall of the nasal pharynx. Has two parts, uh, osseous and cartilaginous part. The arteries of the middle ear, maxillary artery, superior tympanic, posterior tympanic, inferior tympanic, tympanic branch of artery or pterygoid canal, cortical tympanic from the vein and lymph nodes of the middle ear cavity, pterygoid plexus, nerve supply, the uh, tympanic branch of the also pendulum nerve. Actually, uh, the importance of this uh, nerve supply, and sometimes the patient feels the re uh, referred ear ache, that the uh, disease presents something somewhere else, and the patient feels the play, uh, pain in that uh, area of the ear. So, uh, the gossopharyngeal nerve uh, supplies in the pharyngeal area. So, most of the time, the, you have a, a pain in the throat, you feel the pain also in the ear. So, so, this is the correlation. Internal ear. All these structures are in the fister power temporal bone between the middle ear and laterally and the internal of the meters. The parts of the internal ear are bony labyrinth, membranous labyrinth. Okay. So, this is the bony labyrinth, and this is the membranous labyrinth. Bony labyrinth has a vestibule, three semicircular canals, cochlea, and the membrane labyrinth has semicircular ducts, cochlear ducts, two sacs, utricle, and saccule. These bony canal cavities are lined with periosteum and contain a clear fluid uh, the perilymph. The membrane spaces are filled with endolymph. The, the internal ear converts the mechanical signals received from the middle ear, which starts as a sound captured by the external ear into electric signal. Into and transform information to the brain. The internal ear also contains receptors that detect motion and position. Okay. How the internal ear works? So this is the thing. The tumor is the central part of bony labyrinth, contains the oval window in its lateral wall and communicate anteriorly with the cochlea and posterior superior villi with the semicircular canals. Okay, uh, vestibular equity leaves the vestibule and passes through the temporal bone to open on the posterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Bony labyrinth uh, contains the same similar canals uh, projecting the posterior direction into the vestibule. vestibule. There are three in number, anterior, posterior, lateral. Each canal is on the two-third of the circle connected to the both ends of the vestibule and one and dilated on the ampulla. These are oriented to the each canal is at the right angle to each other. The function of the canal is to give the orientation in the surroundings. Bony labyrinth also contains the cochlea, which is a bony structure uh, on itself, two and two and third quarters. The arrangement produces a cone shaped structure with the base of the cochlea and faces the posterior medially. Apex uh, that faces anterior laterally. This pose position is the wide base of the modulus near the internal cochlear where it is entered the branches for the cochlear part of the cochlear vestibular cochlear nerve. Bony labyrinth. Looking on the modulus held uh, central portion of the treatment. The lamina of the modulus is the cochlear 
uh, which is a component of the membrane labyrinth. The bubble duct creates two canals, scara vestibular and scara tympanite. They extend throughout the cochlea and contain each the, at the back through the narrow slit. Cochlear aqueduct near uh, the round window, small channel, the cochlear uh, canaliculus. They, it just provides a connection between the perilymph containing cochlea and the subarachnoid space. Inside the bony labyrinth is the membrane labyrinth. Okay. Contains two sacs, the utricle and the secure, four ducts, the three and uh, the three semicircular canal ducts and cochlear duct. The general organization is this. The cochlear duct within the cochlea of the bony labyrinth and three semicircular ducts within the three semicircular canals of the bony labyrinth, posteriorly secure and utricle within the vestibule of the bony labyrinth in the middle. These components of the membrane are connected with parent. These are the two sacs, three ducts, the utricle, secular, anterior, posterior, and lateral semicircular canal. Utricle, the utricle is larger for the two sacs, it is oval, elongated, irregular shape, and then the posterior superior part of the vestibule of the bony labyrinth. Three semicircular ducts empty into the utricle. Secular is a smaller round of sac. Lying anterior and inferior to the vestibule of the bony labyrinth, uterocellular ducts. Inside the utricle, uh, these the senses is that the balance of uh, for the balance are uh, organized into the unique structure in the, each of the components of vestibular apparatus of the utricle, secular sense, or in the macula. Utricular and macula of the secure. So these are the sensory receptors for the balance to maintain the balance of the body. Uh, organ of parti. This is the organ of parti. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this, these are the uh, the organ of party uh, is the basic uh, part which transmits the sound from the cochlea to the brain. Okay, and present into the scala uh, mid media. Okay, uh, this is scala vestibula and scala tympani. Okay, so scala. Uh, <coughs> Uh, beer supplies and these are the uh, sensory innervations of the system uh, innervation. Actually, I uh, briefly described you the anatomy of the ear uh, for the uh, clinical posting. Uh, if you want to go for the details, you should uh, revise your anatomy from your anatomy book. Okay. So uh, the next uh, of my topics, uh, how to take the history of the uh, patient when you uh, see in the OPD or in your ward uh, for the ear complaints. Okay. Um, this history is uh, exactly the same on the same pattern as you uh, uh, 
uh, uh, if you take the history in the medical uh, wards or in the surgical wards, uh, starting from the first, you should take the bio data of the patient. In the bio data, uh, you mention the name, age, sex, marital, uh, marital status, uh, occupation, address, uh, um, way of uh, 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 way of uh, how the patient comes uh, in uh, you in the ward or in the OPD through the emergency, okay, the mood of admission, you can say. So uh, these are all the uh, points you mentioned in your in the bio data. The bio data is a little bit important in the ENT because most of the disease uh, related to the uh, low socioeconomic class. If you know the address of the patient, think about the the area is. Uh, uh, crowdly, uh, there's a very crowd in that area, or you can say the Kacha house is there. Okay. Okay, so uh, after bio data. Uh, you should take the uh, complaint by which the patient uh, uh, came to you or uh, comes to you in the OPD or in the ward. So, for example, a patient has an ear discharge uh, or ear pain or any kind of uh, related to the ear, the major complaints. So you sh should only mention that complaint, like the patient has a ear discharge since one year, uh, one year, okay? Or you can say patient has a hearing loss for uh, two years or that then. So you uh, mention the uh, complaints in the points on the chrono chrono chronological basis, chronological basis that you uh, say that the, the if the complaint is more Okay, so uh, this is the uh, presenting complaints. Okay, and in in the history of the presenting complaint, you take the each and every complaint uh, in the just like you mentioned how the complaint started and how the uh, complaint uh, uh, moves uh, with the, and the relieving factor, the aggravating factors of that complaint, the uh, the all you, you you mentioned the history, the story of that complaint, you can say. 
so history of pelvic complaint is you explain each and every complaints in the chronological form as just like you said that according to patient he was all right one year back then he uh, started uh, um, fever um, uh, uh, after that uh, fever he develops uh, or developed uh, ear discharge and then you mention the quality of the ear discharge whether it is yellow or see discharge or you can say the amount okay that's which i discuss in my later slide okay so in the history of the complaint you mention the these all all these things then the systemic review systemic review is this that uh, you uh, mention uh, or you can say you give the uh, complaint okay one or two uh you ask the questions uh, from each and every system for example the patient has from the respiratory system you you ask the question for the patient has a dyspnea or not hemoptysis or not okay you exclude that system so uh, 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 similarly from the gastrointestinal the git system you ask about the uh, abdominal pain the diarrhea okay Uh, from the neurological system you ask about the vertigo and the uh, headache uh, similarly the cardiovascular and the palpitation so you uh, ask uh, one or two questions from each and every system to exclude that does that system is okay or not because you take the detailed history so in the de- in the detailed history you you are not only emphasize the uh, the complaints of the patient you, you take you think that the patient has uh, maybe uh, for uh, other uh, for example he, he is a diabetic maybe he has some other complaints also so uh, the de- uh, detailed history shows uh, all the things in your history okay uh, then after systemic review to go for the past history in past history you ask about the uh, past uh, medical history and past uh, surgical history okay in past medical history you uh, ask about the hypertension uh, asthma and uh, the tuberculosis the uh, the those history which has a, a long duration history i say is commonly run in our society so you uh, ask uh, about all this uh, these histories this uh, type of things okay in the family history uh, so in the past uh, surgical history as, as uh, so, uh, history about the any operation related to the his disease like uh, ear surgeries uh, most of the time the patient has a two or three ear surgeries in the past or any other kind of surgery like uh, appendicectomy the bypass surgery or hernia uh, for the hernia surgery okay so uh, so you should mention those things in the uh, that column uh, heading sorry uh, in family history the family members related to the person immediate family like uh, uh, his wife uh, or for example uh, husband Uh, or the, the how many children see the mother and father of that person see so uh, any chronic illness if it is run in the family uh, like all that illness like tuberculosis uh, hypertension or uh, asthmatic uh, these are the commonly encountered diabetes mellitus these are the common and uh, things which are commonly present in our society so you should ask about all these uh, thing and if the father of anyone is uh, uh, dead or alive you should also mention that thing and the reason of the death you should also mention personal history in the personal history you uh, take uh, the personal things of the patient like his um, addiction history bowel habits uh, um, appetite sleep so you what is the personal things in the patient 
to ask about this that they have uh, uh, disturbed or not. Addiction history is very important. In uh, first, maybe patient uh, is addicted to pan, chalia, uh, tobacco, which is uh, related to his uh, disease or not. Okay. The uh, last thing is the socioeconomic state. The uh, uh, status of the patient, um, the living status of the patient. Okay. Uh, how she is, uh, he or she, where she she live in the kacha house or the uh, the how many rooms uh, in his uh, uh, in his in her in his or her house, the ventilation of the house. Okay, uh, the about uh, his salary, whether whether it is low salary income or high salary income. Okay? So a uh, few of these things you mentioned in this social economic. Area. So in this way you get some idea about the. Uh, uh, conditions, how the, uh, for example, the ear discharge is commonly encountered in the low social economic uh, status. Uh, similarly, the um, um, uh, uh, the allergic phenomena is sometimes uh, related mostly in the high social economic uh, status because of the um, low immunization, sorry, low immunity in the those uh, people. Okay. Um, uh, uh, a few of the ear symptoms uh, I mentioned in my this slide. First is the ear discharge, which is commonly encountered in our society. Uh, ear discharge may be uh, you should uh, ask uh, that uh, which type of ear discharge this is a, a thin, watery, fussy. What is the color of the ear discharge? Yellow, white, okay. And the characteristic of the ear discharge, whether it is, a, um, uh, uh, whether it is a, uh, you can say, uh, profuse ear discharge, the quantity of the ear discharge, you should uh, ask about the patient, or you, uh, the, the discharge is very scanty. Because uh, uh, if you uh, read, uh, uh, in your further classes, uh, the ear, in the ear, there are two types of uh, chronic ear, ear discharges, pupil tympanic type and the uh, atypical type. The pupil tympanic type has a watery ear discharge, while the uh, atypical type has a, a thick uh, uh, yellow discharge. So uh, uh, if you ask the questions uh, like this, then you uh, make a diagnosis, okay? Ear pain, ear pain. Uh, um, you uh, mostly uh, the outer uh, uh, ear canal or uh, in the pinna or in the external canal. If that area is a, a disease, then patient feel the pain. Uh, for example, patient has a boil in the ear canal or in the ear, or uh, so they feel. Uh, Pain very much severe. Um, uh, so, uh, in, while in case of a middle ear uh, diseases, there are uh, very less chances of the ear pain is there. So, when the external audio canal uh, or external ear is uh, affected, then the pain is uh, related. So, this gives you a clue that the patient has a, a, a problem in the external ear or not. Okay. Similarly, you should ask about the uh, relieving factors and aggravating factors in for each and every brain. So, uh, how uh, the pain is relieved by patients or not uh, putting the finger in the ear or for in case of doing chewing. Okay. Similarly, the hearing loss. Hearing loss uh, are two types, uh, sensory hearing loss and the uh, conductive hearing loss. Uh, the sensory hearing loss, the patient feels that uh, 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 that he has a, a decrease in hearing, but uh, um, uh, they uh, couldn't understand the words of the uh, 
uh, uh, another person. This is most of uh, most of the time this has happened in case of sensory neural hearing loss. While in case of the conductive hearing loss due to the blockage of the ear, um, uh, for example, uh, ear wax or um, uh, the perforated ear drum. So there's only decrease of the voice, uh, uh, sound, uh, but uh, the patient has no complaint of the understanding the words. Okay, so this is a difference in the hearing losses. Uh, and again, you ask about the relieving factors and aggravating factors. Uh, so for each and every uh, symptom, you start from the duration, the uh, uh, onset, the the progression of the disease. Okay, blockage of the ear. That sometimes the patient uh, had there is only set uh, patient in the layman term terminologies. The expression said that my ear is closed. Uh, Yesterday, the water is closed. After that, my ear is closed. But the patient will not say that my ear is closed. So this means that the ear canal is blocked. This this is also a complaint uh, of the ear. Uh, so this is also a complaint of the ear for the patient. Okay, itching in the ear. That most of the time, patient says that uh, I feel uh, itching in my ears. And if you examine the ear, then there is no uh, pathology is present. So uh, you should uh, ask uh, when the itching is present during uh, night or day. So this is also a complaint. Swelling. So in the swelling, uh, this may be in the external canal or outside the ear. Okay, in the external canal, the boil is there, which causes the swelling. In the external canal, and uh, uh, in case of the mastoiditis, the uh, the mastoid portion of the ear behind the pinna, there is a mastoid portion. So most of the time, in case of mastoiditis, there is swelling in in that area. So uh, you ask the questions uh, that uh, for how from how long the swelling is there, um, and what is the uh, the size of the swelling? What is about the Small pea size or lemon. Uh, there's a uh, terminology used uh, the uh, uh, cauliflower ear. In during trauma uh, of the pinna, uh, in case uh, of uh, road traffic accident or assault injuries, then there is a uh, huge swelling over the pinna. Uh, and it's just like a, a cauliflower. So this is in that way uh, you inquire about. The, uh, what is the cause of that swelling? Okay, bleeding from the ear. This is a, a, another complaint of the patient that uh, bleeding occurs from the ear. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, um, immediate onset and, and sometimes uh, gradual onset. Uh, most of the time, you uh, use the cotton buds, and they may injure the tympanic membrane, and this will lead to the bleeding from the ear of the uh, from the tympanic membrane. Okay, uh, tinnitus. This is the uh, 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 type uh, known as uh, ringing sensation in the ear. Uh, most of the time, when your uh, cochlea is uh, weak, uh, so in that case, uh, the there's an irritation of the cochlear nerve and leads to the this type of complaint. Tinnitus. Patient feel. Uh, very uh, disturbing noise in in the uh, silent environment. So mostly the patient feels this type of complaint in the night time. Okay, vertigo. Vertigo uh, is uh, of two types: peripheral and the central type. Central type of vertigo is related to the brain, which is not included in, in this uh, uh, scenario. Uh, or you can say ear symptoms, but uh, if it is of, of peripheral type, in peripheral type, uh, you, if you, I, uh, you see, uh, previously when see uh, the, I discussed the in, inner ear, there is a um, uh, semicircular canals. So semicircular canals, uh, if the, the disturbance in that canals, th that uh, will uh, lead to a vertigo, in which patient feels. Uh, all the things are going round and round uh, in this uh, environment. Okay. Uh, 
and the lastly is the uh, associated complaints associated complaints uh, associated means a patient uh, has for example a history of the uh, running of the nose or upper respiratory tract infections then uh, you should uh, inquire about this because they might lead to the uh, aggravation of the uh, uh, these symptoms like uh, ear discharge so uh, similarly um, the uh, in, uh, if the problem is uh, related in his brain in, uh, in the complication of the ear dis uh, discharges sometimes the upper wall of the uh, tympanic cavity eroded and the pus goes into the brain the patient fe uh, feels the headache high grade fever um and uh, uh, rigors uh, vertigo loss of uh, altered state of consciousness so uh, these are the not the major complaint but the alter uh, the uh, associate complaints so you should ask about all these complaints uh, in your history so uh, for example a case of um, csm so you should ask all these uh, questions in that case Uh, you should not only uh, ask that the what is the ear discharge. Patient may have a pain. Patient may have a hearing loss, blockage. So if you know all these uh, complaints, then in this way you ask about the uh, proper history. So this is uh, the end of this uh, uh, my uh, first clinical posting lecture for the year. So, if you have any query or questions, uh, then you should uh, you may ask about them. Students, uh, do you want to ask any questions? Thank you.